Hi, welcome to today's video about the best budget smartphones of 2023. In this video, we will discuss some awesome phones that won't break the bank. Nowadays, budget smartphones are improving in every aspect, whether it's their screen, how fast they work, their camera, or their batteries. They are capable of performing well in all of these areas. So let's dive in and explore the absolute best budget smartphones of 2023. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Motorola introduced the Moto G Stylus 2023 with a price tag of $200. Now, you can find it in the market for as low as $170. When you use the Moto G Stylus, it doesn't seem like a phone that costs $200. The phone has a big 6.5-inch screen that can show things really smoothly with its 90Hz refresh rate. When you're looking at stuff like your contacts or social media, it feels nice. The borders at the top and bottom are a bit wider, but they don't take away too much from the view. Still providing an 84.5% screen-to-body ratio that will keep your eyes on the content first and foremost. The front camera is in the middle top and looks like a small hole. The Moto G Stylus has the usual set of openings on its bottom. There's the USB-C port and the headphone jack. The only speaker is also down there. On the bottom right, you'll see the metal stylus. There's a small slot for the SIM card on one side and the usual volume and power buttons on the other side. Also, the power button works as a fingerprint sensor. When it's sunny outside, the screen might not be super bright, but inside it looks good. It uses a MediaTek Helio G85 processor and runs on Android 13. The fast refresh rate really helped when using the stylus. Writing with it feels really smooth. The Moto G stylus has a 50MP camera which is a common feature even in cheaper phones. It takes clear and detailed pictures. This applies to nighttime photos too, but it can't capture the extra brightness that fancier phones in 2023 can. Instead of a wide-angle lens, it has a 2MP macro lens. The selfie camera is 8MP, which is decent, but not amazing. The Moto G Stylus has a big 5000 mAh battery that lasted for almost two days with regular use. Now, let's talk about the Oppo A77s. It's made with plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap at all. The mate finish on it is nice because it doesn't collect many fingerprints. The phone has flat sides and smooth edges that make it comfy to hold. At the bottom, there's a Type-C charging port, a headphone jack, and a speaker. On the sides, you'll find the volume buttons, SIM tray, and a power button that also works as a fingerprint scanner. It comes with a regular 6.56-inch HD plus IPS LCD screen. This screen can refresh at up to 90 Hz, which makes animations look really smooth. The colors on the display are pretty good for an LCD panel. However, when it's sunny outside, the screen might be a bit difficult to see because it can only get as bright as 600 nits. Indoors, though, it works perfectly fine. Oppo is sticking with the same Snapdragon 680 chipset that was used in the previous Oppo A76 model. This chipset works well for everyday tasks. The A77s has 128GB of storage and 8GB of RAM, which is plenty to keep the phone running smoothly. The camera setup on the Oppo A77s is pretty standard for phones in this range. It features a 50MP main camera paired with a 2MP depth sensor. While it might not seem as impressive as some mid-range phones, this duo gets the job done for most users. On the front, there is an 8MP camera in a small teardrop notch at the top center. This front camera isn't extraordinary, but it's perfectly suitable for your social media pictures. The Oppo A77s has really impressive battery life. It's equipped with a 5000 mAh battery, which is quite big. A full charge can keep the screen running for nearly 11 hours. The charging is also pretty good using 33W. It takes about an hour to fully charge from empty. 
Next, the Samsung Galaxy A24 made of plastic and has smooth, rounded edges along with a matte finish. This makes it easy to hold and gives a nice grip. At the bottom, there's a USB Type-C port, a microphone, a headphone jack, and a speaker. On the left side, you'll find the SIM card tray, and on the right side, there's a power button that also works as a fingerprint sensor. The screen is quite big at 6.5 inches and uses a really good FHD Plus Super AMOLED panel. Having a 90Hz refresh rate is a nice extra, especially given the phone's price. The display has a small notch at the top that adds to the immersive view, and most of the front, about 81.6%, is all screen. Also, the display can get really bright, up to 1000 nits, so you can see things well even in bright situations. It's got this Widevine L1 certification, which is like a badge that says it's allowed to stream HD content on apps like Netflix and others. Inside the Samsung Galaxy A24 you'll find the MediaTek Helio G99 chip. The phone also comes with either 6GB or 8GB of RAM, which helps it run really well without any slowdowns it works really nicely for everyday things. You can even play games on it, like PUBG Mobile, with settings set to medium. It might not be the absolute best, but it's definitely playable. It has three cameras on the back. The main one has 50 MP with optical image stabilization. There is also a 5 MP camera for wide shots and a 2 MP one for close-ups. The pictures in bright daylight look really good. They have enough clear details, the noise is reduced, the contrast is nice, and the colors look vibrant. The way Samsung software handles the pictures is great it doesn't make them too sharp or overprocessed. But in darker conditions, the camera doesn't do as well. On the front, there's a 13 MP camera for selfies. It takes nice pictures with plenty of clear details, the colors look right, and everything is well balanced. The Samsung A24 has a battery with 5000 mAh, which is about normal for phones in this price range. It can easily stay on for over a day with regular use. And if you need to charge it up quickly, it supports 25W fast charging. The next affordable phone on our list is the Redmi Note 12. Even though it's made from plastic, the back has a smooth, frosted glass look. The phone has a flat back and frame. From the front, it has a modern appearance with a camera hole and very thin borders around the screen. The bottom border is a bit thicker than you might prefer. On the bottom, there is a USB-C port, a microphone, and a speaker. At the top, You'll find a headphone jack and an IR blaster for controlling remote devices. Redmi has given this phone an IP53 rating, which means it offers some protection against dust and water splashes. The power and volume buttons are conveniently located on the right side. The power button also serves as a fingerprint sensor, and it works well for unlocking the phone. Note 12 features a 6.67-inch HD Plus AMOLED screen with a faster refresh rate of up to 120Hz, compared to the previous 90Hz. This upgrade results in a smoother viewing experience, especially when watching videos on platforms like Netflix and YouTube. Moreover, the phone holds Widevine L1 certification, enabling you to enjoy HD content on popular streaming services like Netflix and Amazon Prime. The display has a typical brightness of 450 nits, which can reach 700 nits in high brightness mode, and even hit a peak brightness of 1200 nits. The Redmi Note 12 is the first phone to include the newly introduced Snapdragon 685 processor. However, in terms of performance improvements, this chipset doesn't bring a major leap forward. The processor is quite similar to the Snapdragon 680 that was in last year's Redmi Note 11. When combined with 6GB of RAM, the Snapdragon 685 performs well for handling everyday tasks. For instance, in games like PUBG Mobile, the highest graphics setting achievable is a high frame rate with graphics set to smooth. The only other graphics option on this chipset is balanced, which limits the frame rate to medium. It's playable and enjoyable. The Redmi Note 12 comes with three cameras on the back, a main 50MP camera, an 8MP ultrawide camera, and a 2MP macro camera. When you take photos in daylight, 
The ones from the main camera look nice, with clear details and natural colors. The ultra-wide pictures are also good for the phone's price. While the colors seem natural, they're not as sharp, and some details might be missing. In good lighting, the front camera, which has 13 MP, works well and captures nice selfies. The phone has a big 5000 mAh battery that can easily keep it running for more than a day with regular use. Plus, it supports 33W fast charging, which means you can fully charge it in about an hour and just around 10 minutes more.